Today I want to talk about something that I get asked about all the time and that is ways to manage ADHD symptoms naturally. Now there are a bunch of reasons that people would want to manage their ADHD symptoms naturally. One, diagnosis is a privilege and not every area of the world has access to quick diagnosis or places like in the UK where it can take years to receive an ADHD diagnosis. Another reason is not everybody wants to use medication. Some people don't like how medication makes them feel and so they have opted to use natural remedies to manage their ADHD symptoms. And finally, to those of us who are on medication, we just wanna make sure that we're optimizing our brain and our abilities. And so alongside medication, we want to implement some natural ways to manage our ADHD symptoms. For anybody who doesn't know me, hello, my name is Sarah. I'm an ADHD mindset coach and I come out with videos every single week on everything ADHD and the isms that pair with having ADHD. If you're not already subscribed to my channel, please subscribe and turn on your notifications so that you never miss a video from me. All right, let's get right into it. The number one thing that you can do to manage your ADHD symptoms is to get up and get moving with some form of exercise. It doesn't mean you have to go to hit classes and it doesn't mean that you have to become a bodybuilder, but getting up and moving, going hiking, walking, any kind of exercise that you are interested in absolutely improves dopamine production and can help you manage your ADHD symptoms. And if you like yoga, there is research that shows practicing balancing absolutely helps conditions like ADHD as well as autism. Now my disclaimer with exercise are two things. Number one, make sure you check with your doctor before you start any kind of new exercise regime. And number two, ADHD people have interest-based nervous systems. So be malleable. If you start doing one form of exercise, let's say yoga or lightweight training, and it starts getting boring, don't be scared to change it up. Something that I do when I'm exercising is I try to do it first thing in the morning when I have the most energy. I am one of those weird ADHDers who happens to be a morning person. So anytime I want to get important things done, I make the most of my morning because that's when my energy is the highest and I'm most likely to go forward with my plans like exercising or doing tasks rather than three, four in the afternoon. I'm feeling a little bit more lethargic, a little bit more tired. My medication has started wearing off and I'm probably not going to go to the gym or a yoga class at 4 p.m., but six in the morning, seven in the morning, I'm absolutely down. So knowing what time of day you shine can absolutely help you get up and get moving. The second thing that you can do to naturally manage your ADHD symptoms is to pay attention to what you are eating. Foods that are high in omega, B12, and dopamine rich foods absolutely help manage ADHD symptoms. A high protein diet or a Mediterranean diet with lots of whole grains and healthy fats and proteins helps ADHDers with both mood and energy. Staying away from sugars and simple carby foods like white breads and sugars and cream-based sauces helps you maximize yourself as an ADHDer instead of feeling lethargic. I know that if I have a donut once in a while and I'm a big fan of the apple fritters, then I feel sluggish after that sugar rush goes away. So eating whole foods absolutely helps with managing ADHD symptoms. The third thing that you can do to help you manage your ADHD symptoms is to make sure that you are getting adequate sleep. Now, I know that's hard for a lot of us as ADHDers. We struggle with our carthadium rhythm, which can really throw us off especially if we have to get up early in the morning and we are night owls. Now, I'm not a night owl. I already said that I get up early every day, but a lot of ADHDers are. 
something that you can do or a couple of things that you can do to remedy this is to sleep in a cooler room, 67 degrees Fahrenheit, a dark room, going to bed at the same time and more importantly, waking up at the same time can really help us get a good night's sleep. Sometimes when we are on our phones at night, that blue light tricks our body into not producing the right amount of melatonin that we need to go to sleep. So avoiding screen time an hour before you go to bed can help with a good night's sleep. And magnesium taken at night, again, consulting your doctor before starting any kind of supplements, but magnesium, will help you with sleep. It also helps us with brain fog and memory. The fourth thing that you can do to help you manage your ADHD symptoms is to embrace systems. I know, I know, I know. Use the calendar, use a reminder. You hear that from everyone. And you're probably getting sick of it by now. I know when people tell me to just use a calendar and I am struggling with my schedule, it's the last thing that I want to hear. But as ADHDers, part of our executive dysfunction is being able to organize tasks in our mind, time, blindness, and our working memory. So putting pen to paper when you have to remember something or having that alarm on your phone or that reminder in your calendar will help you to be more productive as an ADHD person. We struggle with these things, so why make your brain do that work when there are systems that you can use to work alongside your brain to help you thrive? Again, my disclaimer with this is, Try to only use one system. Don't adopt every brand new shiny object that you see. But if a system is truly something that you do not like, it is not working for you, the alarms that are going off as your reminders just turn into background noise. Have the openness to change over to a different system if the one you are using is not working for you. The fifth thing that you can do to manage your ADHD symptoms naturally is to practice mindfulness. And this is absolutely my zone of genius. I love helping ADHDers with mindfulness and it's been so cathartic to learn how to use mindfulness myself as an ADHD person. A lot of times we are running on autopilot and that includes our thoughts. And when maybe we are subject to being late more often than not, or we struggle with attention to detail, it's really easy to get inside our head and say, oh, geez, you did that again, or you're late again, or you always mess everything up, or you always make these little mistakes. When we're doing that, our mind is on autopilot. We're not being mindful about how we're thinking about ourselves, and even more importantly, what we're saying to ourselves about ourselves. Practicing mindfulness is as simple as being in the present moment, realizing that you're in the here and now. And so beating yourself up over something that's already happened or catastrophizing something that has not manifested yet is really a waste of our resources, our brain space, the real estate that negativity and being hard on ourselves takes us into and the amount of real estate that it takes up is one of the biggest wastes of time and it absolutely is not going to move us forward in life if anything, it keeps us stuck. Something that I do when I'm able to have those conscious moments of realizing that I'm in the here and now and maybe my internal chatter has been a little bit more negative is to simply ask myself, what is the end goal? Asking myself what the end goal is with my thought process has been an absolute game changer because if I'm sitting there and saying, oh my gosh, I'm always late and now I'm late again and geez, I can never be on time. If I have that moment of clarity where I ask myself what the end goal is, what is the end goal of beating myself up right now? What is the end goal of saying these not so kind things to myself? The list that I come up with is 
the exact opposite of what I want to achieve. Instead of coming up with solutions on how I can start being more on time, maybe embracing the calendars and the reminders, I'm instead going into this negative feedback loop where I am just feeding this beast inside me that wants to beat me up and keep me stuck. Checking myself by asking myself what the end goal is, brings me back into the present moment and makes me realize that me beating myself up is not going to get me to my goal. It's not going to get me to where I want to be and it's not going to change the behavior that I'm currently stuck in. So why do it? Instead, when I have these moments of clarity and I ask myself what the end goal is and I realize that beating myself up is not serving me, I instantly snap myself out of that and start to become more solution focused instead of throwing myself this pity party because I have dropped the ball again. I really, really passionately believe in mindfulness. And on that note, before I give you the last tip, I'm going to give you a bonus tip. If you struggle with your mindset, if you struggle with your internal chatter, if you find yourself at times not being kind to yourself, I do have a complimentary masterclass linked in the description of this video that goes over the five pillars to creating lasting change. When you have ADHD, you're a woman and late diagnosed. As I mentioned, the link to that masterclass is in the description of this video and it goes over the five pillars to creating lasting change in a very organic ADHD friendly way. So check that out after you watch this video. And my sixth tip, my bonus tip is to learn about ADHD. Educating yourself about ADHD, maybe hiring an ADHD coach. I happen to know a great one sitting right here talking at you right now or getting books all about ADHD helps you understand your brain more. If you know how you tick, you can thrive. It's not knowing how we tick, not knowing why we are the way we are at times that really gets in the way of us being successful and managing our ADHD symptoms in a natural way. A couple of books that I really love are Your Brain Is Not Broken by Tamara Rosier, PhD. Great book. As well as Women with Attention Deficit Disorder by Sari Solden, another great book. I will link these books in the description of this video as well. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope that you got some valuable information today. If you like this kind of content and you would like to follow me on YouTube, I would very much appreciate a subscribe with turning your notifications on and liking this video. By liking this video, more people in the algorithm who have ADHD will see this video and get these natural tips as well. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you next week in the next video.